Today we're going to take notes on least common multiples. So in your table of content, you should put today's date, least common multiples, or LCM if you want to abbreviate. And mine's on page 5, which I think most of you guys should be on page 5 as well. Go ahead and turn to page 5. And write least common multiples at the top or LCM for short. Well, before we talk about least common multiples, what is a multiple? When you hear the word multiples, I want you to think of multiply because it sounds kind of like multiply, right? You think multiplication. So if we are trying to find the multiples of a number, we count up by that number, okay? So you're counting up by the number, and the numbers that you get when you count up by that number is divisible by the original number. So multiples are all the numbers that and the original number can divide into. So multiples are all the numbers that the original number can divide into. So if you count up by that number, so for example, if we count up by 6, if we count up by 6, our first number, first multiple is 6, then it's 12, then it's 18, 24, 30, 36, and we can keep going, right? And so all the numbers that we get by counting up by 6 are divisible by 6. And multiples are infinite. There are infinite multiples. So you need to remember that. Now, factors, there are not infinite factors, right? We only have limited amount of factors. That's why we do the UT method. When we're done finding the factors, we put the U around it. But for multiples, if I asked you to list all the multiples of 6, you would sit here for forever, and you'd be listing multiples of 6 for forever. So multiples are infinite. Now there are two ways to find multiples. Method one, which usually you guys would probably use this method, um, is just to list. All right? List the multiples. And until they have one in common, you keep on listing. Okay? So you just list until they have one in common. So for example, what if we want to find the least common multiple of 8 and 10? Well, we list all the multiples of 8. So 8 has, and we list multiples of 10 until they have one in common. So we're going to start 8, 16, and then I'm going to start with a 10. 10, they, don't, they still don't have one in common. Keep going. 20, here it would be 24, still nothing. And we've got 30. Here we have 32. Next we have 40 here, and then next we have 40 here. So this is the first multiple they have in common. So the least common multiple, the LCM, of 8 and 10 equals 40. Now there is a trick to finding the next common multiple. If you know the least common multiple is 40, that means that every 40 they're going to have one in common. So if I wanted you to list the first three multiples they have in common, all you have to do is find the least common multiple and then you know that 40, 40 later they have another one in common. All right? So 80 would be their next common multiple. And then after that, add another 40, because every 40, they're going to have one in common. And that would be 120. So they're going to have another one in common, which is 120. So if I wanted you to list the first three mul common multiples of 8 and 10, it would be 40, 80, and 120. So listing, I always say try the listing first. But let's say you've listed 10 numbers and they still don't have one in common then you would go with the second method. 
The second method is using prime factorization. And we talked about using prime factorization yesterday on GCF, where you can also use the prime factorization to find the LCM, the least common multiple. I'm going to write it on the back. So method two is to use prime factorization. Okay. So here's an example. And it is a little different than the, the GCF. It's not the same. Okay. We might have to do several examples in order for you to get it. So let's say we want to find the least common multiple between 12, 14, and 16. Now I'm going to tell you that they don't have a common multiple until very far down the line, so that's why listing it would not be the best method for these numbers, okay? So let's find the prime factorization of each first. So 3 times 4 and then 2 times 2. Okay. For 14, it's 2 times 7 and then we're done. And then for 16, it is... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. So I'm going to write them side by side. So the prime factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. The prime factorization of 14 is 2 times 7. And the prime factorization of 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. Now, we're going to use the prime factorization and come up with a string the shortest string that has 12, 14, and 16 in it. Because if the string has 12, 14, and 16 in it, that means that whatever the number equals when we multiply the string of prime numbers, 12 can go into it, 14 can go into it, and 16 can go into it. Now, a lot of kids like to do this. They're like, well, if I need to combine the strings, I'm just going to use all the numbers in the prime factorization of 12 and then use the numbers for 14, and then use the numbers for 16. Okay, that's a really long string. You're right, this string has 12 in it, it has 14 in it, and it has 16 in it. So whatever this equals, 12 can go into the number, 14 can go into the number, and 16 can go into the number, okay? But whatever this number is, it's not, it's going to be a common multiple. 12 can go into it, 14 can go into 16. It is a common multiple of 12, 14, and 16, but it will not be your least common multiple. And let's, let's multiply all this out and see what it equals. So this is 2 times 2 times 3 is 12, and then 12 times 14. gives us 168, and then 168 times 16, because all these numbers multiply to get 16. Let's see, 168 times 16 would be, I mean, you can already see it's going to be a big number. It is 2,688. That's what that equals. And so you're right, 2,688 is a common multiple for 12, 14, and 16. They can all go into 2,000. 688, but that is not the least common, that's not the first multiple they have in common, okay? So this is not the shortest string that I can make that incorporates all those numbers. So how do I make the shortest string? Well, they can share numbers, okay? So 16 needs four twos, 14 only needs one two, and 12 only needs two twos, and they can share. So my least common multiple has to have four twos, because in order to in order to be able to circle 16, I have to have four twos. But then 14 can share one of the twos from 16, and 12 can share two of the twos from 16. What else do I need in my string? Well, I need a three, because in order to circle 12 in my string, I definitely need a three. And I need a seven. So now this is a much shorter string, but does it have 12, 14, and 16 in it? Yes, it does. Because look, here's 12. I can see 12 right there, right? Here's 14, I kind of have to go around, but 2 times 7, there's 14. And then here is 16. So all my numbers are in there. They're just squished in there, but they are in there. They're sharing, they're sharing some of the 2s, okay? And so then what does this number equal? 
Well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. And then 48 times 7 is 28. 336. Still a very large number. If you listed, you'd have to list until they hit 336. So it's still a large number, but that is the least common multiple. Okay, so that's why we don't want to list for these numbers because it would take us a while, but this would be our least common multiple. All right, we are going to practice some more um, on a separate sheet of paper so that you guys can understand this some more.